Jackson County Sheriff's Department. We welcome Captain Kevin Hiller and Sergeant Tom Freeman. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having us, Barb. Barb, how are, how are you? Great to have you here. Uh, Kevin has been in uh, law enforcement, public safety for uh, nearly 35 years. Pretty close, wow. pretty close, yeah. It yeah. started in, uh, at JPD in uh, 1989, so. Awesome, so I, I remember uh, when you first were uh, a young uh, uh, rookie cop, yeah, and yeah. here you are, 30, nearly 35 years later, uh, with the Sheriff's Department. And Tom, how long have you been with uh, Sheriff? Uh, almost 12 years now. Great. And this is your first uh, career? First? Yep. Yep, first police job I got out of the academy. Nice. Well, we uh, invited you guys here today because um, a lot of times uh, some of the really cool things that our uh, men in blue and brown do, uh, men and women in blue and brown do, uh, don't go noticed. And uh, today we've got a pretty cool story. Um, Kevin, maybe you can set the scene for us. Uh, what, what happened? Well, uh, we were made aware, uh, the command officers there at the sheriff's office, that uh, Tom, uh, who is a very humble uh, uh, person, uh, had purchased a, a bus ticket uh, for a man that had fallen uh, into despair uh, after traveling here. Um, and, uh, you know, unbeknownst to Tom at the time, uh, he had uh, left his uh, computer unlocked and his screen was there and there was the receipt of a uh, bus ticket that uh, Sergeant Brian Huntlocker observed. Um, although I think Tom had to go to a call, so Sergeant Huntlocker sees the uh, bus ticket. Upon uh, Tom's return, uh, Sergeant Huntlocker asked him what, what was transpiring, what was going on with it, and, uh, and Tom told his story. So Brian just walks by your computer and sees that you bought a one-way bus ticket to uh, where? Uh, Lima, Ohio. Lima, Ohio. So yep. he probably thought, what is going on? <laughs> yeah, he leaving? was just curious what was going on <laughs> as to why. He thought maybe it was for a family member or something, but it was kind of odd that it was to leave town, not to come into town. So uh, he was curious as to what was going on. So you're part of the special response team. And when I think of the Correct. special response team, I think of like a SWAT team but the special response you provided this gentleman was above and beyond so tell us about the call that came in where you first uh, were connected to this person that you bought the ticket for yeah so i was out working the road that day uh, with my shift and i got a individual transferred over to me um, he was on the cell phone it was a manager for one of the local hotels and he told me he had somebody in the lot that was needing some help um, and asked if we could send somebody over to just kind of make contact with him and see if there's a way we could help him out. He told me the individual was blind, uh, had been staying at the room, but no longer had a room paid for, so couldn't stay anymore and didn't appear to have the ability to leave. So I told him it'd be a few minutes, um, but I'd come over as soon as I finished up with my call. And I had a quick conversation with the gentleman that he was talking about on the phone. Um, just to touch base with them and figure out what it exactly was going on to get a little bit more information. Um, and then I responded over there uh, once I got the opportunity to. So this gentleman ended up in Jackson because he was a victim. He, someone scammed him, right? It's what it, it sounds like. He, he met some individuals uh, on the internet. I'm not sure via which social media platform or whatnot, but uh, gave him some promises of a place to stay and they were gonna help him out when he got here. And then when he arrived in Jackson, Nobody would answer his calls. He couldn't reach the people anymore, and it appeared as though that he was kind of <clears throat> duped, so to speak, uh, into coming here, but didn't really know why. Um, and this was uh, a gentleman that didn't uh, that w that was having um, a number of other issues as well. He obviously didn't have money. Correct. Uh, he was f completely blind. Correct. Um, so when he got into town, um, he was trying to figure out a way to to get back home, so to speak, and. Uh, According to him, he had kind of dozed off uh, while waiting at the bus station and woke up to find that his belongings had been stolen, which included oh his phone and his wallet and any money that he had. So then he was in a really tight spot. Um, he said he'd walked down uh, to the city police department and they had helped him out with uh, getting him in connection with the uh, Salvation Army. And they helped him get the room at the hotel for a few nights. But then after that, he wasn't sure what to do. And um, 
kind of led to us getting sent out there. So normally, you know, someone calls 911 and they say, uh, you know, I, I, I don't have anything and I don't know where I am. And it's like, it's every, every call is, is a challenge. What was it about this call that, uh, that brought you to, to invest the, your time and your personal money in, in helping him? Yes, um, after I got there and spoke to him in person, um, I just said to him, I said, well, how can I help you, man? Like, I, it was pretty apparent he was in a, a tight spot. He mm -hmm. didn't know much at all about Jackson. He didn't even really know where he was at. He'd never other, been here before. Other than somebody told him he was at, you know, this hotel. Uh, so he said, well, I, I, I'd like to get home. And uh, I'm like, all right, well, where's home? And started looking to that for him and got on and tried to see if there was a bus ticket available. And there was, and I told him, I said, hey, we, we got to hustle because it's <laughs> the departure's coming up real quick. But I was like, I'll, I'll get you a ticket if you want to go home. And he was pretty shocked. He's like, yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, I would, I'd be shocked too. Yeah. So you flew him over to the bus station to catch the bus. Yeah. And then you didn't just drop him there. What did you do next? So uh, I told him I'd wait with him because seeing what happened the first time he was sitting at the bus station, and people took his stuff. I didn't want that to happen again. I said, hey, I'll hang out with you until the bus gets here. And uh, I did, so I could also make sure he got on the right bus. Obviously, he, he was blind, didn't know where he was. Mm -hmm. he, it wasn't going to be easy for him to, to go through that process. Um, and uh, when the bus showed up, the, uh, the bus driver was great. I wish I'd have got his name, but I didn't. Um, he told me he was a retired police officer out of Maryland. I explained him the situation. He was super helpful. He said he'd look after him and make sure he got to where he needed to go. And um, he helped me get him on the bus and get all squared away, and it worked out pretty nice. And the, the, the story ends, it's a happy ending. Yeah. Which a lot of times, that doesn't happen in your line of work. No, it, uh, it doesn't happen all too often. So it's, it's just nice to help somebody out. And um, I wasn't necessarily intended on everybody finding out about it. Yeah. I was just trying to help a guy out and, and carry on, but uh, didn't work out that way. Well, and, some people wanted to make sure that everyone uh, did find out about this. Tom, I know you're kind of quiet and humble, but Kevin, this is the kind of uh, person that the department uh, is pretty proud of. Absolutely. I mean, Tom, he is a humble man. He, uh, he's a, a, a great um, police officer. He's a, a husband, a father. Uh, he he's very competitive. He does a lot of things within the community uh, that that people don't necessarily hear on a day-to-day -day basis. But you know, it just goes to show the content of his character when it comes to helping out people. He saw someone in distress. Uh, you know, he he's a problem solver. You know, and and he came to this person's aid, which it, it's not unlike. Uh, anything that happens on a daily basis in law enforcement uh, and particularly at the sheriff's office. We have a lot of very hard-working uh, men and women that are very dedicated to Jackson County. Well, you've got to run across a lot of people who are having their worst day ever. Absolutely. And this is, that was that guy's worst day ever. Yep, and Captain's right. We have a number of people that I work with and have, you know, worked for in my career that I've seen do the exact same thing, whether it's, mm -hmm. you know, buying somebody a meal or a hot cup of coffee or helping them get a place to stay for the night or, you know, simply giving them a ride because they're walking in the cold and, you know, they look like they're in a, a pretty bad situation. Um, it's not always about just, you know, catching the bad guy. It's just helping people out in general. Yeah. And Kevin, if Brian Huttenlocker hadn't uh, just happened to glance at Tom's computer screen after he walked away from it, we, we wouldn't be sitting here today, would we? We would not. No. No. No one would have ever heard. You, we would have never known. Probably not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, you know, just something that we found out about thanks to uh, Amy Hawkins. Mm -hmm. Amy's been a uh, champion of uh, police and sheriff and uh, public safety agencies, not just here in Jackson, but throughout the state of Michigan. In fact, she started a, a nonprofit to uh, share the good news and get support for uh, those in, in public service and law enforcement. So thanks to Amy Hawkins for uh, making us uh, aware of this. Uh, and I'd like to extend our thanks to Amy as well. She does 
a lot for the sheriff's office um, and, wow. and, and helps us out tremendously um, in getting stories like this out as well. So the family of this gentleman uh, who ended up in, in Lima, Ohio, um, any further information did you get? No, uh, I actually used some of our investigative tools to contact some family members for him, or at least try, and I couldn't reach anybody, but I left some messages and uh, just to let him know he was coming, so they were expecting him, and uh, I never heard back from any of them, unfortunately, so. Yeah, it sounded like he got, uh, you know, he, what could have been a horrible experience on his first uh, ever visit to Jackson ended up um, being what uh, I'm sure he looks at as a, as a miracle. Yeah, he was pretty fortunate. I think he was surprised. Uh, he asked me multiple times, Are you, you're really going to buy me a, a <laughs> ticket? And I said, yeah, if that's what would help you out. Uh -huh. So uh, and That's going to be very trusting for this guy because uh, he couldn't see that you were a, a sheriff's deputy. Correct. Yeah. Um, he, I, I can't imagine, you know, being in that situation mm -hmm. or somewhere where you're not familiar with, you don't know anybody and, or your surroundings and having to, you know, put your trust in some other people to help you out. It's got to be pretty uncomfortable, I'd imagine. Well, it's a pretty awesome story. And uh, we thank you very much for uh, sharing it with us today. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, uh, that's awesome. Thanks uh, so much for doing that. And thanks for uh, being with us here today. Thanks for having us. Appreciate it, Mark. And uh, Kevin, thank you also for coming in today with Tom. Absolutely, anytime. From the uh, Jackson County Sheriff's Department, Captain Kevin Hiller and Sergeant Tom Freeman.